Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Tom Mizzle. You're watching my channel, Mizzle14, and I'm here doing a review of Love & Hip Hop New York, Season 10, Episode 3. It was another good episode, so let's jump right into it. All right, um, let's do an Evercut Safari. So, you know, they are working on this freaking video invite. That means instead of doing the invitations in the mail, they're doing a the video invite. I guess they were sending to emails, whatever, to everybody who comes to the wedding. And you get the video invite, you get them coming to the wedding. So, um, but Safari, he still was taken aback by the prenup that Evica brought up when they had talked to the lawyer. So, he's just still taken aback, but he said he cannot let that go with, um, let that bother him right now. Because he got to get through this, um, video invite. And the wedding is in three weeks. So, I said, okay. So, alright. So, he did that. And after they finish, Tahiri came. And he said, oh, what's going on, Tahiri, Tahiri, something like that. So when um, Safari left, Tahiri said, okay, what's up, girl? Last time we talked, we talked about this prenup. What's up? So Evica told her how she brought it up. Instead of talking to her about beforehand, she brought it up at the meeting and they said, hell up, with a prenup, and it blindsided him. So Tahiri was like, okay, what you did was wrong. Your approach to it was wrong. You should have had talked to her before that instead of bringing it up. It's like, bam, it's a point up. You blindsided him. So you didn't want to blindsign him. So you was wrong for actually bringing it up in that way. Now, doing a prenup is not wrong, but bring how you brought it up was wrong. So now Erica was like, oh my gosh, yes, everything's going on with having me. I've been so burned with men in the past. I had trust issues and stuff like that. So it's hard for me to trust so now I'm what about his reaction and how he took it it took me aback and realized that maybe I should have had approached it that way and now she don't even know she want to do the prenup I said you went through all this crazy you better go through it I was, I was like oh my gosh girl you better go through this prenup we went to sit there have a sit there whole first two episodes talk about this prenup you brought it up you spun it up with a freaking lawyer meeting and now you don't even realize you might not even want it all right. So, so far we say he had to clear his mind because he needs to figure out this prenup. It's still bothering him, so he gonna talk to the one person that he can look up to, Pat. Um, Pat Poos been married for a long time, so he look he appreciate Pat Poos' opinion. So he gonna sit down and Pat has his daughter with him. She's doing a little thing, a little cute little one, and basically talking. And Pat said it's been a long time because he had to go through this with. his Good. He had to make sure his wife understand that he's good and he trusts thing and he will not do anything to make her feel uncomfortable, to make her feel not to trust him, everything. So he worked hard and it's tough, especially when you get women who have been going through so many F boys, school people who mess them up and that you go through somebody who's loving them, they don't want to take that. So they put you the ringer. So... So, so far we say, talk about how she brought this up about if you cheat that, I'll get everything and stuff like that. She said, oh, so why she brought this closet? Because that's something that he had done in the past. And he said he had screwed up a little bit. He had made some mistakes in the past and everything. But not to the point that he had done anything now to make her feel like he's doing anything. He's faithful. He's loyal. He loves Erica. He wants to make this work. So like that. I just want to make her know that I'm not doing that. And he said, listen. At the end of the day, you gotta do as much as you can to make her make her know that you are good with her and that she could trust you. But at the same time, do everything to make her ease her mind. So if you have to sign that prenup, go ahead and sign that prenup. Just do it. Just do it. At the end of the day, you don't want that lingering battle in your relationship. So if you're gonna make that happy, you're gonna make her happy, sign a prenup, how to sign a prenup. First of all, ever can make money. You have money. I would you would think you would um protect your own interest and protect yourself if anything that happened if i was in that person's shoes in the predicament i would say sure we both get a prenup we both sign one sure we put the clothes in there whatever how much you're gonna give after it happened whatever happened and that's it but getting a half of what i'm making or take everything when i'm making or uh, whatever so so perhaps say you don't think i don't think and you know so far we look up to pap so he gonna follow his advice so so far with erica sat down and talk and this is why we said, um, some things he said, I know some things in the past got made you feel like you have to be 
guard on guard with me. I love you. We're getting about to marry. I don't want to put you in a winger. And a trust thing. We know trust is issues. And they talk about the blogs, about the cheating rumors and stuff like that with the Gabby and all that stuff. Erica took him back after all these cheating rumors and stuff. So she knows it's touchy with her. But she knows that he's not that person who will do any malicious thing, who will potentially will hurt her. And will not do anything to mess the relationship up. So, he told her that he's, you know what? I'm going to do whatever thing to make you feel comfortable and make you feel happy. I will sign it. She said, what? Really? You will sign it? And so, she said, I don't know. That person you was in last night, that person in that is two different persons like that. So, but I have that about thing and I know... You are good. We trust and everything. But you let you know. She is. I'm still going to get half. I'm still going to get everything. But you know what? It will be no prenup. And he said. Who's that no prenup? I was like. Oh, okay. I was like. Erica, you were all that to say that you're not going to have a prenup. I think that prenup will come back again. So. Good to have that prenup. I like. It's nothing wrong with it. At the end of the day. Y'all both protect the for money. Because I know y'all both have money. So y'all want to protect yourself. Everything and just let it be. He just know that your relationship lasts, right? All right. So um, let's do Christy right now. Christy, she had to go to Philly because that's where the meeting is at to meet with the investors of the lady, lady millionaire club, and with her partner Greg, and he will be there because she had to explain about the foreclosure that happened because that it's very damaging that these ladies invested and trusted in her. In the business, invest the money with her and her partner for her to freaking go through something like this, so they will lose the trust of her if she don't put step forward to the story and put ahead of herself in the story. Don't let the story lingers on. Go forward, let it be known, talk about it, be straightforward, be truthful. Let these ladies know what happened, and let it be, and the thing will be all right. And that's exactly what she did. She went to Philly. She took, um, she had Cabela and Juju. Juju said she good with Fred or Yandy. She good with Christy. She is nobody's side. She team money. She's nobody's side. She on nobody's side. She's team money. Because she also has investment business herself. So she's there to support. I said, okay. So Christy did her thing and she talked about things. She talked about how her name was on Indeed. It's not her name. It's not on the mortgage. So it won't. It didn't affect her as much. It did affect her because of the business, but the fact that it didn't affect her as much about the paperwork and the money and stuff like that. Because he made a decision. I had no way. I had no idea about this. I was away for three or four years, and it had his mortgage in his name. So the fact that he didn't tell me and let me know, it looked bad because I don't like to put anybody down. And I don't like to not put anyone down. I don't like to, um, what she said. Make people feel down about this. Put, put people down, basically. And I was like, okay. Oh. No, she won't like to let people down. That's what she said. All right, I try to get that out. So I was like, okay, cool. So they explained all that stuff. And some of the ladies, they, the ladies been for supporters. They was okay with it. They were saying, you know what? They we appreciate you. We appreciate you saying we know this stuff happens. It's like that. But it was more important for us to know that you move forward from this and not let this take over you. And see how you can move forward and learn from that and do better. And she said she will. And she learns from this. She knows what to do. And she just wants you to trust her again. To let her know that she going to do it. She going to win. Just for everyone. So they were saying they're good. They was happy. Greg was happy. And they're going to make move forward. So she was good. Now, before I had to say something. In that ride to Philly, Kim Bella brought something up. Now, Kim Bella... You okay, but you you presented the information wrong. That's skew I know you don't like Yandy, but now you got Christy thinking it's all bad about Yandy, even though Christy's not here for Yandy. But you presented the information wrong, but it was not right. Now, Yandy was not talking about Christy like that. She wasn't. The only thing that she said that was kind of like, okay, maybe she said that is that when she read the part article, she said, the article said about 2010, that's the time that the foreclose happened. And she said, damn, that's around the time that I start managing. She said it just like that. Straightforward, that's it. Now, whatever 
underlined content clues, underlined subliminal messages you get from that. Or she said that she stopped managing Jim Jones at 2010. That's around the time he got the foreclose happening. So that's what she said. Sin is the one who asked about that. And they Yandy the one who vetted. So it was not really messy in the fact that because she really was, was out there already. She just read the blog. She didn't put any of her two cents in it. She just read what happened. Now, Kimbella brought this information to Christy and said that Yandy, the one who brought up at the full close of how she was um, gloating about how she was like, oh my God, she got full close because I stopped managing Jim. And by the time, that's not what it happened. So that's not what happened. Now you took that to Christy in the wrong way. And now Christy thinking that Yanny, the one who brought it up out of nowhere, which it was not out of nowhere, because Sin, the one who asked about that. And then Yanny read it. Now, it is what it is. It was on the blog. It's out there. She's going to have to read that. You could just say, go to the blog. It's on Google. You can look it up with yourself. You can read it yourself, Kim Bella. It's like, it's not really messy. So I was like, okay. And I say, remember that because it will have come up at the end. Because I was like, how? Why, Kim Bella? So you know what? Kim Bella we care for Yandy, and that she made up good with Christy, because you know Christy beat her behind years ago. And now, they apologize that, and then they cool now. Now, I don't know if they cool, cool 100%, like besties, but they good for them now, because they linking up as don't like Yandy. So it's kind of like, like one of my follow YouTubers I watch said, it's like alliance, basically. And it's kind of like a teaming up alliance, like, I'm cool with my enemy right now. Who I just made cool with, cause we could have a bigger enemy we both don't like, which is Yandy. Like you say, enemy of my enemy is my friend, right? So it is what it is. I like so that's what she said. I was like, no, Kim Bella, you bought that thing out so wrong. You presented that shit wrong. That was not what it was. I like so. Um, so then she told, um, she called Jim and she told Jim about. The update about everything, and he said, "So, baby, baby, we talk about this. I'm sorry about that. I should let you know it's not. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm thinking about you, you have your own set of things that you care about. I have my own set of things that I worry about, and it's not. It wasn't that intentional thing like that. So I was like, okay, whatever. So he said he understands, and he would try to make it better for next time and cool. And they try to make a joke or something. Like, oh, he made something at the end, and she said, uh, oh, we're not going through this. We're not. Uh, uh, uh." Don't give you no list in the other houses. You're not having this. We're not doing that. Click bye. She said, good thing. I'm strong. I said, okay, Christy. All right. So we have Pat Poos in the, um, Hot 97 because he promoted his album and stuff like that. Because while Remy is doing her thing, he promoted his music. And um, he had somebody named Fresher. And there was a white dude out there. though. What good looking white dude. And Pat. And they got Fresher. With a PH. They keep saying fresher with a PH. I say, okay, we got it. His name is Fresher with a PH. With a PH Escher. Like, come on now. <laughs> I like, so, I guess, um, I think uh, Fresh is under Pat Poo's, um team or label. I think it's Pat Poo's Entertainment or Sun Entertainment or whatever. I think it's, uh, I guess it's one of Pat Poo's artists that he bought. And what we got for Fresher is that Fresher... He working on getting his, he did a, a, a musical, Wait a Minute. I really don't listen to hip hop or rap like that, so I really don't know about the song. But called Wait a Minute, and it's a song with Cardi, and then uh, later on he did a remix with Remy Ma. And he took care of his kids, he have his own, He his goal to have his own record label, or he have his own record label. And... He also took care of his baby mama, who he was for 20 years. I was like, a baby mama for 20 years? That's not your wife? She not married? Like, what is going on? Like, I would not be... Okay. Take so kids that had been mom for 20 years. Now, and maybe he got recent kids with her. I would love her. But baby mom for 20 years, that is something. Something. I would say, damn. What is... What's the relationship? Like? So you just a baby mom and baby daddy? No relationship? That's your girlfriend, but you didn't marry her? I was like... I was like... When he said that, I was like, baby mom for 20 years. I was like... Ooh, okay, that's your, your kids are 20 years old or something like that. But I was like, okay, we'll see about this lady, who she is. But we didn't meet her yet. I guess next episode we will meet her. But, um, 
I would say we'll see more. And then he asks, um, the guy asks Fresher to spit something. He spit something. Papoose also spit something too. Well, and I look like they was on it. Like they said, spit a rhyme and they spit a rhyme. I hear that. So that was that. So then we met a new girl named um, Janeski. Yeah, I said it right, Janeski. All right, so Jonathan, I guess he met her something like that, and at a while she con they connected, and he doing her makeup and stuff like that, and she do some photo shoot in the street. And what we got it for Janeski is that Janeski used to be a backup dancer for a lot of artists, Remy Ma, Quincy Set, like that. She did be a backup dancer. But now she realized she wouldn't be the forefront and she said she would rap a lot better than a lot of the artists that's out here now. And I said, okay, okay, whatever, whatever you say. So, she's doing her, she she have her own, she have like a lot of music, she have like 30, 30 plus songs already ready to drop, but she just needs somebody to manage her and get this thing to go on so she can put her, produce an album and get it out there. She have her own studio. Her music, like she's on point, like she's really focused. And when you saw her first of all, when she saw that little film show, it was like that's kind of like a mini looking Minaj. You can tell her about her face, but I was like, okay. So she do her little thing. So rich, rich dollars. I was like, why, why, why you want to manage anymore? Like you really had. Who was the last person he managed? Like whatever. So he said he has been took a break for a while with the baby mama and all that stuff like that. So he. Want to get back on it. So I guess he met Janeski. Janeski, I, I can find him. Or Jonathan invited um, Rich to see her. And he would see her. And she, it was all cool. She was all popping. She was, like she was trying to get music out. She was then like, he asked her to spit something. She spit something. And I said, okay. And he liked her energy, like her vibe. And he said, she just want her music out there. She just want to know what's going on, what's out um, there. And... Oh yeah, then she talk about Fresher, that Fresher, she was working with Fresher and he wanted me to be on his label, but uh, she was talking about how Fresher is more concerned about her body, her image and things like that he could do for her than her music, because he was saying, uh, he wanted to put me in the crib, he wanted me to get me a car, he wanted me to do this, he wanted me to get me a new body, he was this, that, and it was, they sound like, he sound like a side chick, um, kept woman. And I said, like, I said, yes. He sounds like he just want to keep you in the side and just do what he want to do because she said he was more interested in my body than more in my music. I would say, I guess so. And later, prevalent later on when they had this little business meeting, I was like, so, and he was like, oh, it's just fresh and all that stuff. I said, cool. So she's not, she's trying to see who could be the right person for a fresher or rich dollars and everything. And because she said she know rich got a history and, um, um, an image out there. Um, so she trying to um, make sure she picked the right decision and she know his reputation. So she trying to be a little iffy about him and fresher, whatever that. So later on, she had the business meeting with fresher and she sat down with him. I said, first of all, what the hell are you wearing for a business meeting? I said, good. If you want to consider be a business meeting, let's okay. We wear some things like business like. But you having a business meeting at a restaurant. Does it say that business can happen at a restaurant? Because some people do have business meetings at restaurant eat, but not as much. I would say this is really business business to go to the office and sat in like a professional setting. Like why gotta be at a restaurant? So they drinking and she sat down and basically he was saying what's going on, what he gonna do for her? and he was saying what what we're gonna do, what's the plan is. He basically said everything about the music. He said, yo, I need to do this. We need to get you a new body. We need to get you a nice car. We need to get this, this. We gotta make you look like a goddess. I started there. I said, "What's wrong with her?" I like that's gonna look like a beautiful girl. Look, good girl. She don't. She got eight cup titties. She said eight cup titties, like she said. And she said she had no problem getting what she wants. So what is it? I was like, "What? Why she need a new body for?" Just like good music. He said the people out there, the music you try to cater to, they care about the image. They care about how. You, yes, they care about how you present yourself. But the music is the most ultimate goal. Like, if people don't like your music, they only care about how you look like. Like, they really don't like, they don't care about your music. They're not going to care about you, what you look like at the end of the day. Because at the end of the day, the music is the forefront. And that's what you should be portraying. Like, yes, I understand. Music, image is everything. A lot of people these days do like to see the image of a person. So, for the fact that he said he would give her a new body and stuff like that, I said, what was all that had to do with her? 
do a good music. So you saying that she won't be successful unless she get all these materialistic things in front front before she become a music wise? I would say fresh up, oh my gosh, you just want her, just to want her as your side piece, a little something you can have with her side, if, side of your girl for baby mama for 20 years, so you can do what you do, all that stuff, I, I can tell what the story's about, and then you gotta have this girl, baby mama going at this girl, like, she is a threat, like, cause fresher is the one who's out here trying to get this girl put on or something like that, but you wanna fight this girl, I see what the story's about, y'all, it's, okay. So she said she got a showcase, and he said, "You serious? I got a showcase. I got a vibe a vi rich dollars." He said, "Oh, rich dollars." But he he agreed to go to the showcase and do what she got to do. All right. So Jonathan and Yandy met up because John Jonathan is having a Franklin's line. He met up with Yandy. He was talking. Yandy was saying, "Oh my God, what's going on?" Nothing happened that meeting that would cause any crazy that you wasn't talking out of your neck about her and all that stuff. And Yandy was saying, "Yo, for the chick that." Fought you, beat you up, give you a black eye, have your your private parts all freaking exposed to the world, and then you good with this girl to come at me? I was like, okay, it's something up with it's something something up with this friendship they have in these two. I said, hey, yes, it is. But um, she was good. Oh, I saw it. She said, whatever. It is what it is. So Jonathan invited Yandy. To his fragrance line. He had a perfume line. I said, if you a guy, I like, it. hey, do what you gotta do. Perfume line, perfume line. And he went, he worked off, he worked on this a long time. He's happy he have it. It's finally out there. So he worked on, he invited everyone. He did invite Kim Bella. He did invite Christy. He let Yeti know that he invited them. So she said, oh, great, great. I said, okay, y'all. So we had this fragrance line, the fragrance thing. Sin was there. Um, Yanny Sin congratulated Jonathan on his fragrant line. It looked like a freaking, <laughs> freaking brown liquor bottle. I said, what is A small little bottle, all dark and heavy. I said, what is It's a fragrance. I said, hey, what the hell? Look, what is, I think it said La Vida or something like that. I, look, I ain't get the name, but it's a perfume line. And he said he happy. He worked so hard for it, so it's good. So, Juju and Kimbella came. And Juju Camilla came and said, let's, let's clear up the air. And we said, Sean said, it's nothing happened at the thing that was so messy that would cause anything to go off to Christy. Because John didn't know that, knowing him, knowing Camilla, that she would screw the information and tell Christy something about Andy, which exactly what she did. She did with the screw the information up. So that was that. And he said, let's make it clear. So Yanny said, look, come in and said, well, you bought it and stuff like that. And so Cindy said, no, I asked about it. And she said, no. Because Yanny was like, messy. she said, no. Cindy said, I asked about it. So Cindy said, I asked about the blog. And then Yanny, all she did is vet was already out there. So what, how did this guy misscrew uh, and, and misinterpret it the wrong way? How this came an issue? Like, Cindy was like. Bothered by it. I was like confused. I was confused too. I said, How the hell she misinterpret that whole situation? Because she don't care for Yanny. So when you don't care for someone, you, you interpret it how you want to interpret so the other person can feel for that person. So, so, so Kim said, Yeah, you you asked the question, but then it's like, I said, No, it was like, All right. So after all this talking, then Chrissy walked in. And Chrissy said, What's going on? What's all the yelling about? So we was talking about the situation. And so we said, What would say? It was like that. Oh, because you not manage your gym, or like you better than gym, it's like that, like that, that the foreclose happened. So she said, you try to, you say that you made gym and you this, that, like that, if you wasn't about you, gym was nothing. She said, that's not what I said. That's not what I said. I said that um, when the article read 2010, I had, as, there was a time, I said, that's the top um, time I stopped managing. She said it just like that, and it played back, and she exactly what she said to Chrissy in front of her face. So Chrissy said, ha, 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 ha. so you think you made Jen? And she said, no, that's not what it is. She said, that's not what happened. And so Johnny got in, and then he started, he started, this is good. He said, with your single IQ, tell it was, I was like, you know what? You is too much, Jonathan. Like, sit, Jonathan, all right. You stay freaking going at Camilla like that. Like, reading her and dissing her and stuff like that. But Camilla did mess it up and screw that information up. So, so yeah, they said, this is crazy. It's like, it's beneficial for her. For you be cool with her to come at me, and this was happening. So all that stuff. So yeah, he was talking like this, and I, but she wasn't. I don't think she was being really aggressive. So you know, Christy don't really care for Yeti. So she was like, 
you better calm it down. Calm it down. You better calm it down. I'm not playing. You better calm it down. I was like, all right, Christy. All right, you want to fight her so bad, you want to fight her so bad. But yes, Yanny was pointing, you know, but she was saying she just, some people like to talk with their hands. So, she, so it's better for her for you to be on my neck because it's cool for y'all to be good and y'all come after me. It's like that. That's not what it is. It's you screwed this off and on. It's like that. I had no issue with you. I had no problem with you. I'm not hating that she was like that. So, I don't know. But when she, Chrissy said, you better calm down. You better calm down. You got to be the wall wall. You better calm down. And that's how the episode ended. I was like, oh, okay. Okay. All right, Christy. All right, I see you. I like Kim Bella. I know Kim Bella is something in back and boom and like, hee, hee, hee. She knows she did her little job to getting Chrissy all bucked up. We're going to try to fight Yandy. But I would say that was information they need to be fighting, uh, need to be for her for because at the end of the day, Yandy didn't say nothing that was all disrespectful. All that she said that she stopped managing a lot of time at 2010 when the foreclose happened. I said, this was this. It was shade, it was shade, it was nothing like that. But she didn't say anything added extra to that meeting that Kim Bella brought up. And made it miss school that yeah he was talking mess about her that wasn't messy all right so that was over here by new york y'all please like comment subscribe to my channel tell me how y'all feel about this episode and i'll talk to y'all later all right peace